Good morning, everyone, from uh, beautiful Camp Whiteman. Uh, if it's raining there, it's raining here. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Hello, Father. Here I am at Camp Granada. It's very exciting when it stops raining, right? That's what we're looking forward to. Hey, so my technology on my laptop is a little bit different, and uh, I was hoping I could get the normal setup um, with um, my... Uh, on screen text. It doesn't look like it's going to happen today, but we're going to do our best to get um, the uh, the Bible read today. Um, we are going to use the same format that we've been using, and that is the Bible Gateway through with the Bible um, in, uh, I don't know, 200,000 days or something like that. But it's the, um, the daily readings for today. So if you've got your Bible handy, uh, you might want to open up to Psalm 111. I'll give us a couple of seconds to, to flip through and to go and get your Bible. Uh, why don't I just open us with a brief word of prayer then as we gather our stuff together. Heavenly Father, would you give you thanks and praise for the way that you um, superintend every detail of our lives. Thank you that we can be together. Uh, today and uh, every day through the miracle of technology and uh, just because of our desire, Lord God, to be in your word, to be in your presence uh, with one another. Lord, we do pray that you would bless our time. We pray, Lord God, that you would speak to our hearts as we read your scriptures. And Lord, we ask that you would just continue to watch over your people. Um, we thank you, Lord God, for the safety that we experience. We pray for our brothers and sisters who live in places um, that uh, are less safe for followers of Jesus. We pray for them, Lord, not only for their protection, but for their resolve to follow you in spite of the danger, in spite of the uh, sometimes negative consequences. But we just pray that you would watch over them and bless them today. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you've got your Bible, I invite you to open up to Psalm 111. Again, I continue to read in the uh, ESV. <laughs> Sorry, that's the English Standard Version, and um, it's a little different than the NIV that a lot of us uh, grew up on. But uh, let's praise God and read his word together. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just, all his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people and he has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Hallelujah. Lord, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of you, the knowledge of you, uh, the knowledge of your awesomeness, Lord. We thank you and we praise you that uh, you have given your people wisdom, uh, first to know you, Lord, and then to follow all of your precepts. And I pray, Lord, that that would be our experience today, that by the power of your spirit, you would lead us and direct us, Lord. Help us to yield ourselves to your spirit, that we might honor you with our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, scrolling down uh, to our Old Testament reading, it's chapter 18. Uh, it is the section in Genesis where uh, God appears to Abram by the oak of Mamre. I'm not sure quite how to say that. I've heard about a million different translations. Mamre. But we'll, we'll go with that one. Genesis 18, 1 through 15. And the Lord appeared to him, that is Abram, by the oaks of Mamre, as he looked, as he sat at the door of his tent 
in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, three men were standing in front of them. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your eyes, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three sayers of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abram ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared, and he set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. And they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. And the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Sarah and Abraham were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, Am I worn out? And my, after I am worn out, and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, No. But you did laugh. God knows the heart. And yet Sarah is going to learn an amazing lesson, right? As will Abraham. And as should we, as uh, we read the story. And uh, together with them experience again uh, the mystery of God's power and might and uh, his provision. Right? What he says he will do. And uh, that is... The way with God. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. This is, I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 20. Again, uh, the Apostle Paul is writing. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly <clears throat> that now at length, <coughs> excuse me, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly now that at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Now that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you, Philippians, yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered the partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only, even in Thessalon Thessalonica. And uh, unfortunately, I have to end it right there. My Kindle that I was using for my, for my Bible just gave up the ghost. Isn't that just amazing? Um, you know, I did get up early uh, to do the technology, and uh, there you go. Didn't quite work out the way that I was hoping that it would, um, but uh, we're going to leave it there. Maybe I can get it quickly on my uh, on my phone. I'm not going to be able to. But we can finish that tomorrow, reading from Philippians. Um, I will get the technology worked out, and uh, we'll be able to get um, get a little better presentation as the week goes on. I thought everything was set up, and uh, evidently it wasn't. But um, God is with us. Looking forward to a day. My job this week is going to be working with uh, the different teams to prepare a, a time of worship. 
I'm excited about the curriculum that they're doing and plugging in. Uh, it's about the children. It's helping kids. And uh, there's some uh, families here for family camp. Uh, this is one of the components of the ministry of um, Camp Whiteman, inviting families to come and to use the facility to be a part of what God is doing. Um, here at Camp White Men, they get to do the boating and they get to participate in all of the worship stuff that, that, that goes on. Um, it's really kind of a, a really deep way to go about um, the presentation of everything that they're doing. Um, tomorrow we'll get um, plugged in to our um, country of the week, but I just want to talk a little bit about Nigeria today. Um, we recall that uh, although it's not number one on the list of persecuted um, countries, um, it is um, a country where more Christians will die um, or more Christians did indeed die in 2023 in Nigeria than in any other country in the world um, persecuted for their faith. And uh, I'm mentioning this because last night, as I sat down to dinner, um, you know, I don't have a, a uh, you know, we don't have assigned seats. Um, the staff and uh, and certainly I um, can rotate between the tables if there's an empty seat. And I sat down with one of the families and uh, lo and behold, the family that I sat down next to was from Nigeria. Um, they're a couple, Patience and AJ, with their two kids whose names I have not memorized yet. Um, Patience is a student in the uh, PhD program at UConn in uh, languages and, and language teaching, um, the Francophone languages, I guess that's French and all the derivatives, um, but uh, they are from Nigeria and uh, I happen to mention that we support a missionary um, who was also a UConn grad. I identified myself as a UConn grad and um, and I said, she is serving in the uh, city of Jos, And you could have seen the look on this woman's face. She said, I'm from that region and spent six years teaching at the university there um, as a student, a master's student, and a, as, a, um, as a teacher, a teaching assistant. And, uh, you know, here we are in Camp Whiteman, halfway around the world, talking about the city of Joss with a woman, and I guess her husband was there as well, um, who had been there, had lived there, and knows the situation very well. And we talked at some length about the situation in Nigeria for Christians. And uh, it was really an amazing thing that God did to bring us together and to uh, just remind us of um you know, what, that God is alive and that God is doing a work. And uh, I'm just, I was blown over by that. And I just, you know, immediately knew that this was something that God had orchestrated just for us, right, to spend that time together. And uh, it was pretty amazing. So that was my God moment yesterday. So let's praise God as uh, I'm going to sign off. A little earlier than uh, I normally do, but um, please finish reading in Philippians um, at reading that we are in, and uh, we'll pick it up next time. Let me close this. Lord, thank you again uh, for watching over us. We pray, Lord, that you would just continue to bless your people around the world in Joss, in Nigeria. Uh, we pray that you would be with Aaron. We pray that you would be with EJ and Miriam in the Philippines. We pray that you would be with Julia Budd in Czechia. We pray that you would be, be with Noe and Glenda Hiron in Guatemala. We pray that you would be with all of the teachers and students at Eva and the kids at Mama Tara. We pray a special blessing on Mama Linda as she continues to serve there. And Lord, we just pray that you would encourage us all uh, to walk more closely with you. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen and amen, and we look forward to being with you tomorrow, same bat time, and hopefully the technology will be a little bit better. We'll see you soon.